So I'm pretty sure you've heard that ChatGPT got officially downgraded and that it is simply not the best AI chatbot anymore. People are posting videos, tweets, subreddits, all talking about the decline of ChatGPT. And their proof seems legit and believable. So let's see if these people are actually right. So all the drama is due to a Stanford University study. And the research they did was pretty simple. They gave a task to ChatGPT in March this year and then a few months later. And after all that, they compared the results. And to our surprise, the results dropped from 98% to only 2% in a matter of few months. The question slash task which had this huge drop in results was is X and Y a prime number? So this wasn't really a complicated math question at all. Now a lot of people might say that okay this is clearly a lot worse but what about coding? So when ChatGPT was asked to generate a certain code in March it was correct 52% of the time but now it was only correct 10% of the time. And because these results are absolutely shocking, everyone is talking about it. And naturally, conspiracies are starting to emerge. The biggest one is that the model is being trained by us on uh, regular people's questions and inputs. Other people say that OpenAI is most likely just trying to save on costs. And to be honest, for the average guy, this explanation would make total sense. And would move on thinking that okay at least uh, my job will not be replaced by AI uh, because you know it's getting dumber day by day. I guess I wasn't the only one who was quite surprised by the results so I started to dig a little bit into the details. I was asking myself could this research be rigged and if so why would Stanford do that? And it turns out that the tests they did were not completely fair to say the least. So let's start with the elephant in the room. How could the 98% drop to only 2%? And to that, the answer is pretty simple. ChatGPT cannot do math. For some of you, this might sound surprising, but it's true. It actually cannot calculate. But GPT, instead of being honest about this, it just gives a wild guess every time. Now let's see what a computer science professor from Princeton had to say about this. What seems to have changed is that the March version of GPT-4 almost always guesses that the number is prime, and the June version almost always guesses that it is composite. The authors interpret this as a massive performance drop, since they only test primes. For GPT-3.5, this behavior is reversed. In reality, all four models are equally awful, as you can see in the following graph. They all guess based on the way they were calibrated. So now we can see that the results are completely random. And with that, I hope we could debunk this first one. But what about the other tests? Okay, so let's look at the programming test, for example. ChatGPT is well known for its great programming capabilities. So it seems kind of odd that the results dropped from 52% to only 10%. And honestly, I was shocked by the reason behind the bad results. So get this, the reason why GPT-4 did worse on the tests is because of Python markdowns. So some of you might ask, first of all, what is a markdown? And second of all, isn't it something that should not be in the code anyways? And let me show you something. So when GPT outputs a formatted text, let it be bold or underlined text, it uses markdown code to do that. So when you see this code block, it was done by Python markdown. If you copy the whole output, it will copy the markdown too. And so what did the researchers do? They did not remove the markdowns. They put the code into testing right away, which obviously meant that it's not going to work. A deep learning researcher tweeted this about his findings. June GPT-4 started surrounding code with Python markdown, which you didn't strip. I forked your code, removed that markdown and resubmitted the outputs to lead code for judging. Now the June version does significantly better than the March version of GPT-4. And the very interesting part is that the researchers knew about this issue. They even pointed it out in the paper, but you had to read the whole thing. So the paper presents the results in a misleading way. It makes people conclude that GPT-4 got worse, but this is simply not the case. Capabilities did not change, only the behavior of the model did. And OpenAI is pretty transparent about that. So the main contribution of this paper is that AI models change over time. 
but this is nothing new. The authors just cherry-picked some questions that performed worse and then highlighted them so much that people couldn't see the big picture. And with that, let's conclude this video with a great perspective from computer science professor Arwin. Okay, I reread the paper. I'm convinced that the degradations reported are somewhat peculiar to the author's task selection and evaluation method and can easily result from fine-tuning rather than intentional cost saving. I suspect this paper will be widely misinterpreted. So yeah, ChatGPT is still as powerful as it used to be and it is still the best AI chatbot by far. And with that, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.